welcome friends to the third session of this course on manufacturing strategy. In our earlier two sessions, we discussed the importance of manufacturing in the development of a nation. We see that the government of India is focusing on the sector of manufacturing as a major player for creating jobs for the large number of youth of this country. At the same time, we also focused that manufacturing can provide competitive advantage to the organizations. Unfortunately, the role of manufacturing is not seen by many top thinkers to provide the competitive advantage for the organization. Therefore, we focused that how manufacturing can provide that advantage to the organization. Moving further, we discussed the output in terms of uh, quantities, in terms of the share of manufacturing by some of the major economies. We discussed about the development of China as a major manufacturing hub and we also discussed that how that advantage is uh, moving away from China. Now, in this particular session, we are going to focus on the operations strategy because manufacturing which is primarily a production activity, but since we are living in an era where uh, most of our GDP is coming from the services sector. So, the operation strategy can be a broader term which can take care of your production strategy and which can take care of your service strategy also. So, now if I see the traditional way of working in the organization. Now, in the traditional way of working in the organization, we normally see that we have a top strategy of the organization which is uh, the corporate level strategy and considering the strength or the factors which are available in the internal and external environment which uh, uh, we get from the SORT analysis. If you do the SORT analysis of the organization, you consider what are the internal factors in your strength, what are the internal factors which provide weakness to you, what are the external factors which gives you opportunity and what are the external factors which are posing threat to you. And based on this internal external analysis, you develop the operation strategy to achieve the business strategy or the corporate level goals of your organization. So, what I want to say that this diagram gives you the idea that first we set the corporate level mission which is a long term activity and uh, it is uh, more like a uh, philosophical statements for the organization that we want to achieve a very high level of customer satisfaction, we want to achieve that level of market share, we want to be the number one company in the fortune 500 etcetera etcetera. So, that is a more kind of a philosophical statement that is the top level activity at the organization in terms of strategic management. With this corporate level mission, we develop the business strategy of the organization and uh, though the primary driving force of the business strategy is the corporate mission, but the global business conditions that what is the scenario at the global level and uh, what are your strengths and weaknesses, what are your competencies, what are your weaknesses, all these things contribute in the development of this business strategy. So, corporate mission and the business strategy both are the top level activities in any organization. Now, the development of long term activities into this business strategy is actually the conversion of that philosophical statement into some achievable goals. That is the importance of business strategy. A executive in the organization understands business strategy more clearly because here you have some achievable targets in front of you and uh, obviously, the external environment this is the external environment component and this is your internal environment component. So, 
your mission statement the external environment of the business internal environment of the organization all these three things uh, give you the business strategy formulation then with the help of this business strategy the product and service plans are finalized what type of product and service plans you want to have for your organization so in case of uh, business strategy you want to have let's say a very innovative company and uh, once you want to be very innovative company you have a product and service plan like for an example take qualcomm so they have a very clear cut product and service plan that these many number of patents we need to file every year so if you are going to be an innovative company accordingly you will make your product and service plan on the other hand if you want to be a low cost company that is your business strategy that i want to have the lowest possible cost of this product so accordingly your product and business plan will be there and the example of reliance geo is in front of us so the business strategy will translate into the product and service plans so what type of business strategy you want to have accordingly you will design you, you will come with that type of uh, products and service offers so uh, if you want to have a uh, low cost company and you want to offer like if you want to have a low cost airline so in low cost airline if you offer very high quality food during flight it is going to increase the cost of your air ticket and then the objective of low cost airline will not be achieved so this is the poor designing of product and services so you have to be very careful that what type of business strategy you are having and according to that strategy you need to develop your product offer you need to develop your service offer when we are developing this product and service offer the important thing from the point of view of the operations strategy are cost quality time flexibility these are important components of the competitive priority which can provide competitiveness to the organization so whether you want to be a low cost company whether you want to be a very high quality provider of the products whether you want to have time advantage you want to deliver very fast so that can also be a competitive priority how much flexibility you are offering so these are different types of uh, uh, competitive priorities normally in language of operations management we call them as qcd that is quality cost delivery time and then you have also added the dimension of flexibility into it so now we have qcdf uh, that uh, are the different types of competitive priorities you can have in your uh, uh, product and service plans so uh, but this competitive priority should also flow from the corporate mission and then business strategy if the competitive priority is not in sync with your top level activities then again you are not going to take the competitive advantage out of it and finally once you decide that what type of competitive priorities you want to have in your products in your services accordingly you will design your operations strategy so as i mentioned that in my traditional way of thinking the operation strategy is a result of this entire activity this entire set of flow of activities starting from the corporate level mission then formulation of business strategy the product process plan deciding the competitive strategies uh, competitive priorities and then finally you come to the formulation of operation strategy when we will discuss in our subsequent sessions we will focus that even this operation strategy 
even this operation strength can also help us in formulation of my business strategy. Though we have made one arrow here which is focusing on this aspect that how my operation strategy can provide different types of competitiveness and weaknesses and these things should be taken into account for formulation of my business strategy. But there can be much more, there can be much more which are important in formulation of business strategy and where my operation strength can contribute and that will be the major uh, you can say output that can be the major strength of the subject of manufacturing strategy that my operational strength can contribute significantly in development of my business label strategy. Now, uh, going uh, further in this uh, uh, traditional way of thinking where uh, uh, operation strategy is a result of business strategy, we see that competitive priorities are the most important thing which are shaping my operation strategy. Now, the competitive priorities are very important thing to understand that what is the competitive priority. Now, competitive priorities are our abilities, our abilities to fulfill the customer requirement in a different way than my competitors. If my competitors are fulfilling the requirement needs of my customers in x way. So, I should be able to fulfill the requirement in a y way. So, x is the way followed by competitors. And y is my way. So, the competitors are following a different way of fulfilling the customer's requirement that is the x way and I am following a different way of fulfilling the customer's requirement that is the y way. For example, in our country to deliver a packet from one end to another end, we traditionally used the post office services. And in the post office services, the objective is to help people in delivering their packets from one location to another location. And in that, uh, the only objective is to keep the cost minimum of delivery. So, that was the traditional way of delivering the packets. When courier companies started, when courier companies started, they followed a different way of delivering the packet where they offered faster deliveries and secure deliveries. So, these are the competitive priorities for a courier company as conventional way of delivering the post office way of delivering was the low cost method. So, the earlier priority was the low cost but courier company took a different priority that is the faster delivery and secure delivery. So, with that way you can understand that how I can be a different thing than my competitor and if I am following a different way that becomes my competitive priority. Now, in terms of uh, operations management four important competitive priorities we will regularly discuss the one is cost that is one very important competitive priority. The second is quality Q C and third is delivery performance. So, Q C D and fourth is the flexibility. So, nowadays we require either competitive priorities related to low production cost, delivery performance the high quality products and services and then customer service and flexibility. When you see that how over a period of time different organizations exploited these competitive priorities then probably this concept will be more clear to you. So, now let us see the cost related priorities. When we talk of low production cost you need to see that 
example of China as a whole is the most beautiful example that how Chinese organizations competed the whole world on the basis of low production cost. So, they set low production cost as their competitive priority and uh, Chinese government also enabled that infrastructure in which Chinese organizations could provide products at the low production cost, whether they followed economies of scale, whether the factor cost of inputs were low, whether they have uh, large scale production facilities, whether they have uh, lot of state interventions into their manufacturing activities, all those things uh, were designed to achieve the competitive priority of uh, low production cost. So, that is one very important thing and if you orchestrate everything around a particular competitive priority, certainly you are going to take the advantage of that. So, the low production cost China is a very perfect example for that thing. Then comes the high quality Q, C, D. So, quality is also a very, very important aspect of the competitive priority. Organizations like Toyota are the best example to understand that how one can get the benefit of this quality as a competitive priority. Toyota set very high benchmark of quality for their production facilities and we know the success of Toyota all through the globe is because of their ability to produce high quality products. If you talk of uh, in present scenario, uh, Apple is another very important name and uh, in the field of uh, mobile markets, uh, electronics gadgets, uh, Apple's name is uh, one of the name which comes with very high quality products and services. Now, Apple is also able to rule the market of mobile only because of their ability to produce very high quality products. And in our previous sessions also we discussed this point that Walmart is number one company in the fortune 500 list, but in terms of profitability in the list of fortune 500, Apple is the number one company. So, if you have this type of quality as your competitive advantage, then you can certainly take the lead in the overall manufacturing irrespective of industry. So, whether uh, I am talking of Toyota, so Toyota is no longer limited to automobile only, Toyota's quality functions, Toyota's quality revolution is followed in many other kind of industries. Similarly, Apple is not limited to mobiles, Apple's ability to produce very high quality product is now going into automobiles is not going into the consumer durables, maybe in uh, shoes, maybe into FMCGs. So, when you are developing that how competitive advantage can be taken from either cost or from quality, people across industries follow your way of doing the work. Then third important thing is delivery performance. Now, delivery is taken into two very important thing. Now, in case of delivery, whether you are making faster delivery, that is one aspect of delivery performance, that you are able to deliver products at a faster rate. The second important is your ability to bring products at a faster rate. So, one is how quickly you are delivering the products and how quickly you are bringing new products into the market. So, that is also a very important aspect and uh, the companies like uh, Samsung, they are actually getting the advantage, they are uh, now into the forefront of uh, their fields because of their ability to bring new products uh, at a very fast rate. On the other side, companies like uh, Amazon, companies like uh, Flipkart in India, these companies are able to 
take the market share uh, in the field of e-commerce uh, because of their ability to deliver products at a faster rate. And uh, therefore, even if you have the good delivery performance uh, for that matter companies like uh, Maruti in India because of their very able delivery performance uh, they are able to catch large amount of market share of the Indian car users. So, uh, delivery performance can also give you a very good competitive advantage, but you need to design your entire ecosystem so that you can achieve that uh, competitive priority. Then flexibility, the customer service is also becoming a very important competitive priority. Nowadays, customers want very specialized products and when customers want specialized products, uh, it is not possible to produce products in large volumes. So, you need flexible manufacturing systems. So, flexibility is also becoming a very important competitive priority that you are able to incorporate customization or high degree of customization in your production system. So, if you are able to provide more customized products to your market to your customers obviously, this is going to give you much more advantage. So, customer service and flexibility is also becoming a very key role or uh, that is becoming a very important thing. The very popular example of flexibility is coming from company known as Dell. Dell was known for providing customized computer machines to its customers. And uh, you can remember that we used to visit Dell's website for designing our unique machines. But over a period of time, we do not want that kind of uniqueness in our machines. And therefore, now most of us give order of similar type of machines. But Dell developed a system where customers can take the advantage of flexibility and uh, nowadays even uh, in case of automobiles, uh, even in case of consumable, consumer durables, uh, even in case of uh, various other luxury products, uh, we need this high degree of flexibility because we want to be unique that kind of mindset is coming in the customers. And uh, to fulfill that needs of the customer of uniqueness, uh, you need to design your uh, manufacturing system so that it can fulfill the requirement of this uniqueness. So, uh, uh, nowadays if I uh, summarize this entire discussion of the competitive priority of cost, quality, time and flexibility, we see that uh, nowadays it is uh, not possible in the coming scenario when uh, we will be seeing the a different type of manufacturing because of more automation, because of uh, more uh, uh, information technology related development uh, that you can survive with only one or two type of competitive priority. Customer will require a combination of all these things. Earlier the examples which we discussed survived or are surviving only because of one particular type of competitive priority. But the time is coming where customers are looking that uh, it is not either or, they want high quality products, they want these products at low cost, they want faster delivery as well as uh, very high degree of innovativeness and at the same time they want customized products. So, all these things are going to be simultaneously coming in the arena of manufacturing quality, high quality, superior quality, low cost, faster deliveries, right time deliveries and flexibility. So, the new challenges or you can say the competencies which organizations need to develop should be not limited to only one particular type of competitive priority. We discussed these things in the past, but the organizations of future require competitive priorities where Q, C, D, F can coexist. 
So, this is the new phenomena and if we can develop that type of competitive priorities in my organization, then probably I can put my operation strategy to provide the major input to the business strategy. So, that is the overall idea of that how operation strategy should help the business strategy, what is the traditional way and how this traditional way is going to be changed in the future. The other important thing uh, which uh, I will like to discuss almost in the end of this uh, session that uh, the operation strategy which uh, was the major part of discussion of this uh, particular session. But similarly, as we are discussing the operation strategy, there can be a marketing strategy, there can be a human resource strategy, there can be a supply chain strategy etcetera. So, all these are the functional level strategies. We need to see that these functional level strategies are not in silos. We need to have a good sync between these functional level strategies. If that sync is missing, if that sync is missing, you cannot take again the competitiveness or the strength of a particular type of functional strategy. Because if your operation strategy is not in sync with the marketing strategy. So, whatever strength you have, you are not able to take those strength to your customer because marketing is responsible to reach out to the customer. Similarly, the type of skills because human resource strategy provides you the what type of talent you are requiring, what type of talent you will require and uh, therefore, your operation strategy requires a very close connection with human resource strategy also. And for that matter, human resource strategy should also be closely connected with the marketing strategy, what type of talent you require to go to the market. So, all these functional level strategies must be intermingled properly. If that intermingling is not proper, then again there will be a problem of converting the strength at the functional level to the advantage at the business level. So, we discussed just a quick recap that we discussed that in our traditional method of uh, uh, understanding the operation strategy or developing the operation strategy, we have a corporate level mission which is converted into business strategy where we take the inputs from internal as well as external factors and uh, this business strategy is then translated into the competitive priorities and based on the competitive priorities we develop our operation strategy. We discussed in detail about the competitive priorities which are abbreviated as quality, cost, delivery and flexibility and based on these competitive priorities, we make our operation strategy. But we also emphasize that uh, operation strategy being a functional level strategy, we need to have a strong intermingling, we need to have a proper sync between various functional level strategies, so that uh, we can achieve the objectives of uh, our business level strategy and the functional level strategy can provide inputs to the formulation of business level strategy. So, with this we come to end of today's discussion, thank you very much.